Welcome. I'd like to talk to you today about a wide area video surveillance and analysis technology developed at Livermore in the recent years that allows for the first time the ability to analyze large cityscapes, in fact, even small countries, instantaneously from overhead, look at what's happening underneath, look for the problem areas, and react to it. This technology is called persistics. Now, the genesis of this technology comes from DOE's interest in monitoring weapons and nuclear materials movement across the globe. So almost 10 years ago, Livermore decided that we were going to build large cameras that would allow for overhead viewing of certain special facilities and the ability to analyze what's happening in those facilities, look for movement across those facilities from one side of a nation to the other. That spawned off our interest in building bigger and bigger cameras. So we started out in the mid-90s from HDTV, which was very effective in the Kosovo era, and then continued to grow bigger cameras over the years till the Army and the Air Force got interested. And today, 2012, as you see from the x-axis, the very end of the line at the bottom, you'll see the camera developed out of DARPA can now view 10 square miles in a single snapshot and not only view the image, but also analyze information out of it. So what's the challenge? The challenge is we have no ability today to store this data, to analyze this data, and to make sense out of this data. So to put it in perspective, the amount of imagery that this large camera, the DARPA camera on the extreme bottom right, can capture is the equivalent of three times the Library of Congress, which adds up to about one petabyte in every mission. That means every day. So the globe, not just the US, is challenged by how we can make sense out of all this information. And DOD in particular has been attempting to use this information technology, but is stymied by the fact that there's too much information and we don't know what to do with it. To capture the problem that this capability, persistics, allows us to engage and solve, I'm going to summarize what it is that video surveillance suffers from. Now remember, this is not YouTube. This is looking from overhead, from 20,000 feet, at cities and countries, analyzing the information from flying overhead, and sending that analysis product, that intelligence product, somewhere else for further action. The problem here is too much information, not enough storage, not enough communication bandwidth to bring it to ground, and most importantly, not enough eyes on the ground to look at it and make sense out of it. So the question that we took on head on was, well, what are we going to do about this? Is there any, any way that we can exploit the time domain and the spatial information in an orbiting camera from 20,000 feet to compress the information you get, and then look for what it is that we're really interested in. In other words, can we compress the background imagery and then capture what's moving on that background to our advantage so that we can transmit this much smaller compressed package long distance overseas? So we can then assign predators and the UAVs to react to it. Next slide answers the question. And the answer is a thumping yes. Yes, we can. But if it is so easy, how come the rest of the world hasn't done it? And the answer is, if you look at video, there's a lot of motion in video. There's motion from the camera. There's motion from the moving airplane. There's motion from the gimbal. There's motion simply because the lens may not be bolted just right. And every video analysis technology in the world today, including those developed by the Israelis and the Brits, suffers from the fact that all the noise I spoke to corrupts the image. So you really can't compress it like you would want to because it's not clean anymore. 
So if there is one golden nugget that I'm going to allude to in Persistics, it is our ability to clean up video imagery, wide area video imagery to perfection. So that we can now put all the frames that we pick up from overhead, stack them one on top of the other, compress them by a thousandfold or more, separate out the movers or whatever remains that is still jiggling around, put that back on top of the compressed background, and send this much more compressed data product to wherever we want to, even as much as analyzing it right at the camera itself, so that what comes to ground then is just the output of this analysis. So the key here is our computer scientists at Livermore that have worked very hard together with some of the machine learning and the artificial intelligence guys we have in our backyard to combine the ability to clean up video, compress video, and then use machine learning to analyze the product and look for the bad guys from the good. Look for anomalies from normalcy. That's what Persistics is all about. So if you walk down these bullets, you've actually demonstrated our compression capability. We are going to be applying these algorithms and actually sending stuff out into the war right now and hope to take it into the regions, for example, for border security and for other areas in the domestic environment where this kind of overhead imaging capability can be used to advantage. So again, to summarize, the key nuggets of our invention, if I can say, say that, are one, cleaning up the imagery as best as we can, compressing the imagery thousandfold or more, applying machine learning algorithms to develop tracks for the movers, and then analyzing those tracks in a background which we have called normal based on prior history. This talks about these very same elements. So the, the key, key components of persistics are, first, stitching the cameras that are building up this wide area format as best as we can, frame to frame making all the corrections needed for intensity, lens aberrations, etc., and then stabilizing the imagery first at the very coarsest level and then all the way down to the pixel level so that the background becomes more of a 3D saran wrapped terrain on whatever it is it is imaging. So this is an exemplar cartoon of how we do this, and let me walk you through this. First step was we image a frame and we combine it with the next frame of video at the few points which are at the boundaries. Once we've got them aligned, we go to the next level and align the next level of detail. And we step this down all the way till we've got, voila, an image of Walnut Creek. This is our background. Now anything that's moving on this background is captured separately, and that could be a definition of traffic, that could be a definition of a motorcycle going off the road because the guy is going to do something crazy, that could be somebody planting explosive under a culvert. Anything that goes away from a pattern of behavior which we call normal can then very quickly be defined and analyzed. And this is another schematic of how we build up this compression. So we are not only looking at the image and cleaning it up, but we are exploiting the fact that an orbiting platform is collecting the same image many, many times. And so if you took all, to put all the math together, you end up with a very data dependent, but 1,000x to 10,000x image compression capability. Now there's another wrinkle I'd like to emphasize in what we've done, and that is we as a user can define regions of interest, which could be all the roads, which could be a shoreline, which could be let's say a nuclear processing plant. And you can say, I'd like to see more what's happening here. Or it could be a playground, or it could be a theater for the next uh, concert. But I'm not interested in everything around this area. Those regions of interest can define how we do our compression, and that is a user input. spent a lot of time talking about compression. I just want to say a few words on what do you do with this compressed image and just highlight the fact 
that all this is about making your life easier. So you don't have to stare at the entire image all the time looking for bad things to happen. For example, in the presidential campaign, President Obama is giving a speech. You want to keep an eye on this through the days that precede and the days that follow to make sure that there's no subversive activity happening in that area. You want automated algorithms to do this. You want machine learning to be able to do this. You want artificial intelligence to help you. And that is represented in my pyramid of this tree, where you start from pixels, but you end up right at the top of the pyramid, top of the heap, in detecting a threat network before it really goes into action. So how do I do that? I do that by taking the compressed imagery I just described, taking all the movers, whether they are vehicles or people, and tracking them, and then combining the tracks to define what's normal and what's abnormal. The kinds of things we can do, we can search for abnormal patterns in a region defined, for example, by a square box in the top image. So everything that goes in and out of that box, I can query for. I can filter it by patterns such as where there is a traffic pattern. The red shows high density, and the yellow is low. So you're monitoring traffic at a certain intersection, and suddenly the traffic goes dead. So the question is, is that because everybody's at church, or something bad is going to happen, and the neighborhood knows about it, and so nobody's on the road? These are the kinds of questions we can ask. These are the kind of behavior patterns we can analyze now, because persistics has those algorithms built inside it. So I want to summarize. Um, this is a video analysis capability. It doesn't compete with anything coming out of Google or any of the other vendors in the market, because it really addresses a different format. And by that, I mean you're looking down. You're looking over a whole city, or in fact, a whole country. You're analyzing very small pieces of information, what we call very low signal-to-noise images. And you're trying to describe their capabilities and their, their uh, actions in terms of the good and the bad. Persistix does that. And we're actually now even transferring this to looking at images captured in space. So in the long run, the future that I see for domestic surveillance, for DOD surveillance, for looking, for example, at forest fires and where they're growing and where they're going down in, and for all kinds of applications where I'm hoping you can help me, this should be a very valuable technology. Finally, if you have interest and questions on what I've just talked about, please contact the Industrial Partnering Office at Livermore, and we'll be glad to address them for you. Thank you.